this little shanty's a romance. Tells how a sailor took a chance. He bought a boat for almost double its worth, then gave his girl a double berth. She got a double bunk, double trouble bunk. She really had a hunk of trouble in that bunk. She'd rather leave her bones to dear old Davy Jones. Much better to have sunk than share that double bunk. E-R-O-O, chugga, 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 chugga. They say all nice girls love a tar. His loving wasn't getting far. Still, like they tell you, there's more fish in the sea. But who wants fish? Not me. She got a double bunk, double trouble bunk. She really had a hunk of trouble in that bunk. And sing to Mandalay, it's better any day. She rather would have sunk than share that double bunk. He had a double bunk, double trouble bunk. He really had a hunk of trouble with that bunk. The Navy's not the same, it seems an awful shame. Sleeping like a monk in an empty double bunk. Just a simple little exercise to improve our bust line. Ready on the backs, ladies? Are we all on our backs? Now, ladies, I want you to raise your right arms above your heads. And at the same time, I want you to kiss your left knee. Now then, with a one and a two and a kiss the knee. me, hurry. Are you mad? Have you seen him coming in here? Take a look at that. Did you see this could be the answer to our problem? But I don't understand. I mean, we've never... Besides, I haven't got a telly. What? Look, not that, dear. That there, marked in ink. Well, this. Complete home for one thousand one hundred pounds. In a most sought-after area. Do you realize that we've been engaged for three months? And I've never seen you in anything... Secluded, yet accessible. It's not as if I'd known you in the summer. At least I'd have seen you in a bathing costume. Oh, do shut up a minute. Let me finish this. Two bedrooms, dining room, lounge, Kitchen, bathroom, well, it's the right size. Charming garden, apply, harper, houseboat, jasmine. It's not a house, you idiot, it's a boat. Well, it's a houseboat, and at least it's somewhere to live. You said we couldn't get married until we'd found somewhere to live. I'm beginning to feel like a Trappist monk. It was only... I... I read somewhere that it's very bad for the health. That's something terrible to the brain. I should have known you were a sex maniac when you came to that door six months ago and asked for a shilling for the meter. I had a tin full of them. Darling, if the old ogre finds you in here, she'll have us both thrown out. I only want to kiss you. After all, we are engaged. <laughs> I'm afraid of you, idiot. My kettle. It's boiling over. Miss Dealey! 
Keep quiet, you may go away. attractive than Hammersmith. Now, you won't rush into anything, will you? I mean, just because we haven't found exactly what we're looking for... That's there's... what we've been saying for the last three months. Now we've only got a week to find something. We would have had two weeks if you hadn't called her a filthy-minded old faggot. Well, so she is. Just because we happen to be in bed. me. Alfred Arthur's the name. <laughs> Just been doing the weekly shopping. <laughs> oh. uh, my name's Goddard. Um, this is my fiance, Miss Dealey. Oh, do, Miss Dealey. How do you do? Looking for somewhere to set up home, eh? Yes. Well, now, I'm not sure whether I can let you have Jasmine. We've had a terrific response to the advert. It's rather large, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Good heavens. <laughs> not that old tub. That belongs to Watson, Leonard Watson. He owns the moorings. Property dealer, really, you know. No. <laughs> this is Jasmine. <laughs> Interesting lands, hasn't she? Lord Kettle, the steel magnet, was the previous owner, you know. <laughs> oh, well, now, shall we go aboard? Oh, Miss Dealey, after you. This way. Thank you. We'll uh, start at this end, shall we? <laughs> Makes a nice room, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Oh, it's amazing. Well, who'd have thought there was so much space? Uh, that's one of the things I like about a boat. Plenty of cupboard space, too. <laughs> Had one or two of the boys on board for a drink. Oh, that's another thing about boats. Plenty of social life. <laughs> we'll come down below. Oh. You'll have to get out of the habit of seeing uh, downstairs, you know. This is your department, my dear. Galley or kitchen? And this is a little woman. My dear, Mr. Goddard and his fiancée, Miss Dealey. How do you do? Thank you very much. They are interested in buying the boat. Do you really mean it, Alfred? Do you mean it? Of course I mean it. <laughs> she hates the thought of leaving it, you know. <laughs> there now, take a grip on yourself, little girl. Take a grip. <laughs> Bathroom and usual offices. <laughs> This is my cabin. Beautifully fitted out, isn't she? Very nice. Lord Kettle spent over 15,000 pounds on her, you know. 15,000? Here she is at speed. Taking on the Riviera, I believe. Oh, she's beautiful, isn't she, darling? Yes. Remember, we're only looking. Shall we go along? Excuse me. This is a little woman's cabin. She doesn't sleep too well, you know. So I thought it would be nice for her to have her own little cabin. <laughs> Don't go getting ideas. You're coming in there with me. <laughs> Electricity's shilling in the slot, and Watson charges two quid a week for the morning. <laughs> 
Not bad, is she? Oh, I think it's marvellous. Well, you've been most kind, Mr. Harper. I think we've taken up quite enough of your time. Nonsense. You'll stay in every bite of lunch. Mrs. Harper will be very upset if you don't. Oh, that's most kind of you, but I really... Good. Then that's settled. <laughs> it will have to be a pot luck, I'm afraid. I'll just pop down to the galley and see what Mother can knock up. Don't let a chance like this go. Eleven hundred pounds. Why, the cost us that to furnish a house, if we ever found one. Now, you promised you wouldn't get involved. We ought to think about it for a minute. I've been thinking for five solid minutes. And I can't see any snags, can you? All right. Offer him 750. Are you mad? Why, throw us off the boat. You heard what he said it cost over 15,000. Do you think they'll really buy it, Alfred? I mean, things would be so different if we could only get into the house again. What with one thing and another, I don't think my nurse the kind of stand Things that. would be just the same if we lived in Buckingham Palace. And don't carry on about your nerves. I've done the groundwork. All that remains is the coup de grace. <laughs> and all you've got to do is to provide bacon and egg for four pronto. Bacon and eggs before I don't know whether I've got the eggs. I don't know whether I've got the eggs. You haven't got them, Liam, you cackling old hen. Oh, I hate you. I hate you. Mrs. Hart, I'll knock up some bacon and eggs. More than that, I'll try to knock up. I'll give you bacon and eggs. I'll give you bacon and arsenic. That's what you'll get from me. Lunch won't be long. <laughs> Mrs. Harper was delighted to hear you were staying. Well, we've thought it over, Mr. Harper, and we'd like to have the boat. Good heavens. <laughs> You're a chap to make a quick decision, aren't you? <laughs> Only it's a matter of price. All right. Make me an offer. <laughs> I can always refuse it, can't I? Well, I hardly like Seven fifty. Done. <laughs> Don't be a silly boy. I'm doing you a favour. These things are gold, that second hand. You can tell she's hardly been used. Look at the mats, the pedal covers. Who Look are the... you kidding? Oh, oh, yes, I forgot. You're in the racket, too. A hymn book? Don't tell me you're still using that story that it belonged to two old ladies who only used it to go to church. No. I got a new twist on that. It used to belong to two old Jewish ladies who only used it to go to the synagogue. It's good, isn't it? Look, Yiddish. Good gimmick. It sold three cars last week, and one of them was a sports I car. I ought to have more sense than to do a deal with you. Here, give me a hand with a ribbon.
Good evening. I thought I'd better make myself known. And my name's Watson, Leonard Watson. Leonard Watson? Yeah. Oh, of course, you own the moorings. Oh, well, uh, I'm Jack Goddard, and this is my wife. We just got married this afternoon. Congratulations. Thank you. I heard you'd bought Harper's old boat. I wondered when you were thinking of moving her. Moving her? Why should we want to move her? Oh, then Harper didn't tell you about the agreement. <laughs> He's a dead flower character. What agreement? Yeah, well, you see, I only bought the mooring six months ago, and the man who had them before went bust. I'm not surprised he was charging peanuts, peanuts. And that crafty fox Harper, well, he managed to get a two-year agreement out of him. Two years? Oh. Well, for a moment, you had me worried. <laughs> it expires in three weeks. Oh. All right, how much? If we want to stay here, how much? Oh, well, I thought about, uh, about four quid. Four qu But that's double. Well, we're living in a world of rising costs, lady, a world of rising costs. Yeah, I find it hard to make both ends meet myself sometimes. I bleed for you. Are there any other charges we should know about? Uh, now, let me see. Oh, there's the hire of the hose. Well, it's ten bob a week. Ten shillings a week? Well, couldn't we possibly supply our own hose? I'm sure we couldn't. Well, no, we only call it the hire of the hose, but really it's for the water. You have to pay for the water, you see, my dear. I mean, after all, you can't expect to have anything for nothing, can you? Is that the lot? Yeah, I think so. Oh, how silly of me. I nearly forgot. The car park. Now, we charge the visitors half a crown a night, but, uh, well, we like to help out our tenants. So it's only 15 bob a week. But that's over five pounds a week. I know. It's amazing how it mounts up, isn't it? This is blackmail. You really shouldn't use ugly words like that. After all, you're at liberty to move any time you want, uh, if you can find another mooring. Hmm, cost you a bit to hire a tag, of course. And that's the only way you'll be able to move this old tub. Well, uh, I'll be seeing you. I'll see him dead. Drop in again sometime. You've got three weeks to get that wreck out of here. Uh, don't forget three weeks. <clears throat> oh, well, things are looking up. We only had one week to get out of Hammersmith. from Handel's Water Music. What on earth were you doing? Just thinking. <sighs> I 
Now that's such a dry rot. What bad luck. Doesn't matter. I'll survive. I meant bad luck for me. For you. Do you mind? Well, you don't have to get the needle. I just thought I might know her, that's all. I think that's highly unlikely. She's getting on a bit, isn't she? She's not all that old. Oh, do me a favor. She must be over 20 years old. So she's over 20. Ah, oh, yes, I recognize her type now. She got a bit of a flat bottom, ain't she? Oh, boy, you gotta watch them, I'm telling you. I remember one night during a war, just outside Portsmouth. Rolling about all night we were. I'm lying here, minding my own business. And suddenly she chucks me straight out on the deck. Hello? Is that your missus? Uh-huh. What a cracker. What a lucky basket you are. A wife like that and a yacht. Well, I suppose you'll be doing quite a bit of cruising then. Oh, I'm afraid not. The engine hasn't been started for three years. Oh, that shouldn't bother a mechanic like you. Tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a hand and you'll be all set. Oh, I'd love to, Sid. My wife would never stand for it. My wife would never stand for it. Have you gone stone bonkers? Have you lost half your marbles? Look, boy, far be it from me to interfere between man and wife, but you're in for trouble. Now, now, don't talk such bloody rubbish and pass me that ring spanner. I'm serious about it. You've got to be rough with him. Do you think I'm going to give my wife a poke in the eye just to please you? I didn't say that. Do you know what I'd do? Beat her over the head with an iron bar? No, 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 no. Look, there are other methods, boy. Look. Now, look. Looking at your wife there, I can see she's the sort of bird who goes for the soft approach. Spring a surprise on her. That's what I do. Take her for a cruise this weekend. Sort of second honeymoon. And I'll tell you what else I'll do. I'll give up my weekend in Brighton and I'll come and be your crew and your navigator. I can just see the two of you lolling back there in the old deck chairs like a couple of millionaires. And how much is it going to cost you? Just a couple of bob for fuel for the engine. That's all. To give your wife the finest honeymoon that any woman's ever had. Cruising in her own yacht. You know, you're not such an idiot after all. That'd be as two little pigs. I could run the engine. You could do the navigation. Right. Why not come back to the boat with me now and take a look at her? We can make a start on the engine right away. Right. Hey, wait a minute. What about the uh, missus? Do you think it'll be all right? Certainly. Am I a man or a mouse? <laughs> Well, that's about a lot, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much for delivering at such short notice, too. You see, I want to give my husband a surprise. I should think you'd very likely succeed. Oh, thank you very much, ma'am. You don't think I've overdone it, do you? No, ma'am, I. I should say you judged it to a nicety. You won't miss it, and we won't feel the impact of sudden wealth. Homely. My darling, it is the most homely boat in the world. Mm, thank you. 
Do you think you could get into the habit of calling it a houseboat? I mean, it sounds so bleak to say we live in a boat, doesn't it? And after all, it isn't as though we're ever going to use it as a boat. No. Well, um, I uh, just asked Sid if he'd uh, pop by for some food. I knew you wouldn't mind. <laughs> oh, no, no, of course oh, not. Oh, well, you could uh, rustle us up some bacon and eggs? Yes. Well, I'll have to go down to the shops yeah, first. Fine, fine. Well, you'll, uh, you, you'll just, just make the bus. <laughs> uh, you don't mind going by bus, do you, darling? Well, no. Oh, marvellous, marvellous. Then I can show Sid round the house, uh, the boat, uh, the houseboat, um, while you're away. Uh, Marvellous. I couldn't have done it better myself. We'll have about half an hour before she gets back. Oh, now, worry, boy. We've got plenty of time. Ah, there she is. I see what you mean. No eggs? No. Well, let's get on with it. to give me a hand. Oh, think nothing of it, Skipper. Once you get that lot rolling, boy. Awful a lovely cruise you are. Well, I only hope Peggy will stand for it. Stand for it? Certainly. Women are like dogs. You gotta tell them what to do and make them do it. Never let them master you, boy, because they get confused. A dog handler told me that. Copper, he was a nice fella. Just to bring me fags in from outside. What was his name? Burke. No. No, well, it doesn't matter anyway. Ah, ah, your pump's working all right. Thank you, sir. Sir? Thank you. Can't think what's happened to Charlie. Oh, I expect he's had trouble getting away from his old woman. Never could see her standing for a stag party trip to Paris. It's him. Hey, wait! Where have you been, Charlie? Oh, oh. I had to tell my missus I was going on a five-day bicycle race. Well, you still don't have to dress for the party. Bitch came to see me off. <laughs> in his hearse for an ice cream van. Says the warm weather let him down. Good luck. Give me your wet things. I'll hang them up to dry. That's the idea. Stupid about this. 
Well, how the hell was I to know you were on that perishing gangplank? As far as I was concerned, you were safely out of the way. I mean, safely doing, I mean, doing the shopping. Well, anybody would think it was a crime to start a perishing engine the way you're carrying on. May I draw your attention to the fact that I am not carrying on? Well, stop sulking, then. Sulking? Sulking? Do you realize we've been married exactly three days today? What are three days? Anyway, I can't see why you wanted to start the beastly engine in the first place. You're all right, then. Well, I'll tell you. Actually, it, it was to have been a surprise. You think it wasn't? Believe me, you managed that bit all right. I thought things hadn't worked out at our honeymoon as well as they might have. That is a masterpiece of understatement. Cheers. You better get another bottle just in case. Couldn't we start again? I'd like to make it up to you. Give you a sort of, well, a, a second honeymoon. Do you think we could stand the strain? Please don't be bitter, darling. After all, how was I to know the boat leaked? You were wonderful. Not a single word of complaint passed your lips. Oh, God, you're impossible. Oh, I wish I could stay angry with you longer. But I can't. You know, I was thinking as I was working at the garage, I was thinking, one day I'll give that girl the best honeymoon a girl has ever had. Were you really, darling? Were you really thinking of me? But I asked myself, what more could any girl want than a honeymoon cruising in her own yacht? <laughs> Silly. I don't suppose we'll ever be able to afford to buy it. You low, cunning, conniving. So that's what you were leading up to. That's why you started that stinking engine. Oh, what are you getting so mad about? I was only thinking of you. Ooh, I ought to split your skull open with this bottle. Darling, perhaps I shouldn't have tried to keep it from you. I thought you'd be thrilled. No packing or unpacking, just untie the ropes and away, taking everything with us. You could have sat back in your chair all day long like a millionaire. Millionaires. All oh, right, then, a millionaireess. Oh, well, i better go and tell Sid it's all off. I'll, I'll make up some story. All right. Where are we going? Only a little way down the river. We can turn back whenever you say. After all, it'll relieve the monotony for you. Monotony, that's a good word. It's about the only thing we haven't had. You, my darling, are going to have a honeymoon you'll never forget. <laughs> Remember, just untie and take everything with us. That's part of everything. Weekend bag. Hello. Uh, this is Sandra. I knew you wouldn't mind if she came along. Sort of give her hand, you know. How do you do? Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. I'll get the bags. Do you think I can flog this lot? Not on your Nelly. It's this lousy weather. All they're asking for are ice cream vans. Oh, well, never mind. I read somewhere the other day that there's a flu epidemic every seven years. And this, mate, is the seventh year. I'm so happy for you. Ooh. I've been looking forward to this cruise ever so. Have you? Yes. 
That's mine. That lot Sandra's. You wouldn't think by looking at her that she's one of the best strippers in the business. She's got a routine with three pigeons. I do hope I bought enough clothes with me. I found I hadn't got a thing to wear. Oh, I'm sure you'll manage. Shall I lead the way? Yes. He doesn't look like a millionaire. Yeah, well, he's eccentric. Now, don't forget, don't mention money to him. He likes people to think he's skint. Yes. Come on. Oh. Yeah, well, I told you he was eccentric. Come on. is the simplest matter in the world. If, of course, you've had my experience. So, ladies, if you wouldn't mind stepping to the rear or after into the wheelhouse. Thank you, ladies. How is he marvellous? He's even had a chauffeur. Or is it a chauffeur gardener? <laughs> such a charlie in my life. Fortune in it. There's 
There's more mugs for boats than cars. Yeah. You find the right premises, you're home and dry. Home and dry, boy. No, no. Go on, here. Take them all. <laughs> Go on. Take them off. Just for a minute. Oh, I feel embarrassed. Now, be a sport, eh? Well, you know I can't see a thing without them. Certainly. I mean the radio, silly. You mustn't put the radio next to the compass. It upsets it. Oh, Sydney, you keep looking at me like that. You make me feel as if I'm back at work. Quiet. Would you better look where you're going? in two miles. That's almost a record. Complaints? Yes, excessive wash. I don't think we've ever known our radio so busy. Get out of it. We was hardly moving. <laughs> Apparently you were moving to the tune of seven cups and saucers on Arethusa, a cut glass bowl on Lily Maid, the owner of Jane got his sausage and mash in his lap, the Reverend V. Thomas says you wet his trousers, a Mr. Uh, uh, in a hired skiff fell on his uh, fiancée and broke her... Uh, Glasses. <laughs> Thanks. It's funny how you sometimes can't read your own. Uh, uh... Here's another of them just come in over the blower. Old Granville Carter from the sailing club says they ran him down. He could have got out of the way. I signaled that was going starboard and I went starboard. What more does he want? These blokes are aggravating me. Oh, I'm sure we can straighten all this out, officer. Yes, I'm sure we can. Uh, would you like a little something? <laughs> oh, yes, please. You told me that you were a teetotaler. Neville, stand by in the launch. Yes, sir. You do take whiskey, don't you? Well, I, 
I shouldn't. No, not on duty, but... Uh... You see, my husband and I have only been married a week, and this is his first trip. Well, he isn't quite used to it yet, are you, darling? Mm. Yes, but, madam, he, he really shouldn't... You, uh, uh, don't really want to get us into trouble, do you? Hmm? Hmm? Uh, uh, uh... Well, as there are no bones broken, I don't suppose you'll be hearing from me again. We got out of that very nicely. You were magnificent. Thank you. What do you make of her? Looks like a bit of the green belt. Mm, don't know about the green belt. Take a look at the one in white. Old Haven. what I heard on the island. They all go there. Must be a sort of miniature black bull. Ooh. Better be all right then, eh? Here, you take it for a minute. We're nearly there. Lively. So that's it. A miniature black bull. Dump. Well, what do we do now? We can't stay there for two days. Does the old Ramsgate Queen? Ramsgate? That's a thought. You never get away with it. We could say we missed Hohaven. Could you get us to Ramsgate? My fault. Right. Let's go. Get us there blindfold. Well, probably nothing to worry about. May run out of it in two or three minutes. Well, anyway, we know where we are. Here. If we keep heading due east, we must be all right. Copy up. Any sign of Holhaven yet? Hello, what's happened? Where are we? Oh, no need to worry. Just run into a little sea fog, is all. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Now, where are we? Well, um, as a matter of fact... Well, there's one place we're not, and that's where we ought to be, at home. All right? You said we'd turn back any time I said. I'm saying it now. We turn back. Well, it's not as easy as all that. I mean, if we turn back now, we'll be going up the narrow part of the river. We'd probably run aground. Yeah, whereas this way... The world is our oyster. Who knows where we may wind up? Maybe Australia. That'd be nice. I've got a cousin that lives in Australia. Why I ever allowed myself to be talked into this, I... I shall sit down here quietly and compose myself for death. Oh, now, that's silly, isn't well, it? It's not as bad as all that. Well, yes, I mean, pro we'll probably run out of it in five minutes. And what if we don't? It might take five hours or five weeks. Yes, well, in that case... Did you hear that? Look, oh, quick. Get anything you can that'll make a noise. I want you to go out on the deck and bang this with this as hard as you can. Yes, I'll explain the rules later. Oh, but it's foggy! Hurry! Oh, yeah. Keep it on 105. I think I'll sit down and wait for the next catastrophe. Would you care to join me? Yes. Ramsgate, you know, I did a stick show there once. Five to six. There should be a weather forecast. 
that is the end of the weather forecast. Now here is a concert of recorded music by the Rochdale Gasworks Brass Band. <laughs> Just keep it on 105. We should be in round to get up our 7. 7.25 to be exact. I don't mind telling you, mate, that for a little while I was worried. Dead worried. I don't understand it. We should have been in Ramsgate two hours ago. I suppose this couldn't be another little error in the old calculations, could it? Not on your nerve. I've checked and double-checked. Fuel's getting low. We've got enough for another quarter of an hour. And then? There she goes. S S I M. V. Invicta. Ramsgate. Let's have a look. There's the harbour entrance. Right on the button. Oh, if we hurry, we should be tied up before dark. Thank goodness. I'll go and see if I can find something to eat. Yeah, you will do no such thing. Now, this calls for a celebration. If you two girls will go and get changed, we'll take you ashore for the finest meal that Ramsgate can provide. A couple of bottles of wine for the meal, a few liqueurs. Oh, lovely. Do you think we should? Think of the expense. Yeah, I insist. Besides, have you forgotten? You're a millionaire. Oh, sorry. It slipped my mind for a minute. It must be wonderful to be rich. Yes, it was. <sighs> nice work. It's nothing. Well, that should hold up. That's that. How about splashing the main breast? Hmm? Uh, I'm sure I'll help yourself. Good old Ramsgate Harbour. Finally, I know that place like a back of my hand. We used to tie right alongside that very jetty during the war. I was in MTBs, eh? What are you at, Skip? What are you drinking? To Bonnie. All right, I'll have it in a minute. Do you know where we are? Certainly, I know where we are. Ramsgate. Ramsgate? If you'll just take a look through these. At the sign over that warehouse. Calais? France? It can't be. It doesn't make sense. You mean it doesn't make sense? It's as plain as the nose on your ugly face. Now, wait a minute. Look, you were steering a course 105, right? Well, if we're here, how the hell can we... Blithering idiot. You could find your way to Ramsgate blindfold. Excuse me. Who stuck that radio next to the compass? I suppose I must have done when I got the weather forecast. Marvellous, isn't it? And you got to cheat to blame me. Oh, that's fine. That's great. Now we're really in trouble. Oh, we've got to keep the girls on the boat. If Peggy finds out where we are, I'm a dead duck. Can you cook? Are you kidding? I can't even boil water. Peggy's got some cookery books down below. You fix the table. Now, wait a minute. Look. Look, we can't keep those two birds on this boat for the rest of their lives. I know that, but we must have time to think of some way of getting back. Patsy learns to cook. Oh, hello, darling. I say, you look marvellous. And you, Sandra, wonderful. You don't they, Sid? Sensational. Are you ready? Yeah, um, well, Sid and I were just thinking it seems silly to flog all the way down to the town. <laughs> Ridiculous. But what about a nice little meal here on board? If you think we've got all dressed up like this to cook. Yeah, we'd already thought of that. I am going to do the cooking. You? Patsy. Now, then, what about a nice little, um, uh, boeuf bourguignon? If there's one thing that drives me stark staring by me, it's a bit of the old boeuf. Yeah. Well, there isn't any boeuf. There's very little of anything else. I was going to shop in Holehaven. Come on. Oh, my disc. Oh! Oh, for sake, stop messing about. Let's go and eat. I'm starving. So am I. Come on. Well, I think it's silly traipsing all over the town. Madness. All right, we'll go by ourselves. Come on, Sandra. Mesdames, messieurs, bonsoir. Vos documents, s'il vous plaît. I beg your pardon? You are English? Yes? 
Yes. Then I shall require your ship's papers, your passport, and your import permit. Import permit? It is forbidden to import plants and trees into France without a permit. France? Certainly, madame. You are in Calais Harbor. What would my dad say? little error in the old calculations. Now, who is the captain of this ship? Please. Well, I, I suppose I am, in, in a manner of speaking. In a manner of speaking? Well, you see, it isn't really a ship at all. Ah, I see. It is not really a ship at all. It's a house. Perhaps you will be so kind as to tell me how you come to have your house in the middle of a harbor? Well... You may find it a little difficult to believe this, but, well, here goes. It all started as a trip down the river. Jasmine Gay! Can't believe it. it. Must be a mirage. Maybe he raised the rent so much he decided to emigrate, sir. Well, you've got to hand it to him. He got here. He's got to get back yet. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing we knew, we were here. I see. Well, monsieur, you warned me. I might find it difficult to believe. However, I shall give you 12 hours to depart. But we can't depart. We've no fuel. That is not my business, monsieur. If you are still here in 12 hours' time, the boat... Pardon, madame. The house will be impounded until official inquiries have been completed. But just a minute. How long will that take? Well, monsieur, if your story is true, maybe no more than a few days. Au revoir. And for your sake, I hope it is goodbye. In the meantime, of course, you will not be allowed ashore. Mesdames, Messieurs. Now, let's try and sort this out, shall we? We are in France. We can't leave because we have no fuel. If we stay, the boat will be impounded. We have no food, and we can't go ashore to get any. When you said I'd have a honeymoon I'd never forget, you really meant it. This makes the first honeymoon look like a... a honeymoon. If I don't get back tomorrow, I shall get the sack. You think you've got trouble? I got an undertaker coming round on Monday morning for a run in the house. If I don't flog it to him now, I'll have the flaming thing round my neck for the rest of my life. Maybe longer. What? Who? That's all I needed to complete my day. Do you know him? Well, of course I know him. He owns the moorings. Well, then we're laughing. All you've got to do is chat him. You'll give it a fuel, and we're home and dry. Go crawling to him, not in your life. He'd laugh his head off if he knew what had happened. You see, my husband has his pride. Yeah, that's all very well. But you got us into this mess, mate. I did. May I remind you that if I hadn't let you talk me into going on to Ramsgate, we would still be in Hull Haven. If you hadn't what? I told you you'd never get away with it. Just one minute. Do I understand you deliberately passed Hull Haven? Mm -hmm. Well, in a way, I suppose. Did you or didn't you? Well, yes. I thought... I don't care what you thought. All I care about is I am in France. I am tired, I am hungry, and I am fed up. Furthermore, I am going to bed, and if you dare come anywhere near me, so help me, I'll... I'll make myself a widow! I suppose I'd better go and talk to her. Yeah, you do that, Mike. Blow your nose and come with me. Where are we going? We're going to visit our neighbour. What for? When I think of that flipping nurse, I can swallow my pride. Come on. Oh, I look terrible. Oh, Barney, come on. Now, look here. It's stupid going on like this. I'm coming in. If you open that door, I'll throw something at you. Do you hear me? I'm coming in. Drop dead. All right. 
Well, if you're going to be damn silly about it, I'm going to get drunk. Nice drop of stuff, this, eh? Chateau bottled. You'll never guess it was bankrupt stock. Yeah, it tastes all right. Well, a couple of people to see you, sir. More champagne, gentlemen? All right. Well, what can I do for you, eh? I'll come straight to the point. My name is Sid Randall, and this is Miss Sandra Marsh. Charming name for a charming lady, if I might say so. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're off the uh, Jasmine Gay. Are you now? As a matter of fact, we are right in the... Uh, we're in a bit of a spot. Yeah, so the harbour master was saying. Yeah, well, not to beat about the bush and seeing a bloody stick in the water, we thought you might help us out with a drop of fuel. Oh, I wish I could, but I don't think I can. I, I must get back tomorrow. Oh, don't worry, kid. I'm sure Mr. Watson will think of something. The only thing I could do is to give you a lift. We're leaving first thing in the morning, and I expect I could uh, squeeze you in. Could you really? I'd be ever so grateful. The age of chivalry is not past, my dear. And now, Mally, give Miss March a drink, will you? Oh, I can't thank you enough, Mr. Watson. be it for me to desert a pal, but it's every man for himself these days, isn't it? Now I've only room for one. Yeah, Jimmy, Cyril, this geezer's leaving. You can't do this to me. <sighs> now, just a minute, before you start, I want you to right. know something. Yeah, yeah, look, yeah. sorry I couldn't help you with the fuel, but I'm down to my last 400 gallons. You're not getting with a buggy, you know. I've done a bit of Judas. Now, look, fella, fella, just a minute. There must be some other way to settle this. I mean, after all, I'm not a rich man, but... There I am! Oh, my disc. Oh. 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 What happened to you? I went to see Watson. See if he'd give us some fuel. Sir? He had me chucked off. Cheers. Cheers. And I've lost my bird, too. What, Sandra? He offered her a lift down. They're leaving first week tomorrow morning. Tried to talk me into going with him, too. I turned around him. I said, how oh, dare you suggest that a man of my standard would desert his mate and his hour to need. I'm just going to fetch him a right hander and four of his obble he always jumped me. Four of them. But you haven't got a chance, have you? Still, I got in a few good dumps. There you are. That's the lot. Cheers. All right. It's marvellous, isn't it? Here we are, starving, and there he sits, loaded down with food and booze. And he's got my bent. Makes you wonder if there isn't something in this socialism after all. Yeah, or communism. Do you know they have free love in Russia? Disgusting. I don't know. <laughs> well, what are we going to do? I've got to get this thing out of here by tomorrow morning. Well, there's another thing about it. Selfish swine he is. 400 gallons of fuel he's got on that boat. Would you say that again? What's the matter? Are you going deaf? I said he's got 400... Gallons. Well, I shouldn't really, you know. Rubbish. There's plenty more where this comes from. I wonder what can be keeping Sydney. Oh, he said he had one or two things to see to. He'll be back later. Well, as I was saying, I haven't always been a striptease artist. I've done cabaret as well. I feel. Mm. I've got an idea. Why not give a little show for my guests? Work your passage, so to speak, eh? Well, I don't usually do private parties, but well, since you've been so helpful, do you think they'd like it? <laughs> they'd love it. Well, I haven't any of my props with me. Perhaps you could find me a few bits and pieces. Hmm, well, uh, how about these, eh? Well, it's a start. Have you anything else? <sighs> I, I know just the thing. The curtain's down below. Well... Let me see. If we manage to pinch 30 gallons... Oh, two quid should cover it. Hey, wait a minute. 
All right, suppose we get the juice. How do we get home without a compass? Well, simple. We know Watson's leaving first thing in the morning. We follow him back. I'm not so sure it wouldn't be safer, even if we had a compass. Now, wait a minute. Look here. You haven't put the radio on it. Right, all right, now, don't let's start that again. Are you ready? Yeah. Right. This reminds me of when I was in the commandos. I thought you were in the Navy. Naval commandos. Who takes first watch? No, 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 you leave it to me, boy. I'll do it. Oh, thanks. But I mean, after all, when a mate's in trouble. Well, I think I'll go to bed. Oh, no, here. You take it. Go down in there and make yourself comfy. Are you coming too? Yes, in a minute. I expect Peggy will be asleep. Oh, well, caviar and champagne. Well, that should do the trick. We, we're going to have our own little private party in there. Funny the way a boat affects a woman. Loosens them up, makes them romantic. Good luck, mate. Don't forget, if 
Watson shows any sign of leaving, whatever you're doing, stop it and give me a shout, right? Right. 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 Just a lover's tiff. Jack! Oh, Sid! Oh, thank heaven you here. There's a man. Uh, where's Jack? What do you mean, where's Jack? He just went down to see you. Oh, my God. Do you know what? This vodka tastes quite pleasant, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my darling. What have I done? Oh, speak to me. Speak to me. Too much to drink. Oh, Sydney. What a terrible thing to do. Flashy heap of rubbish is all right on the river, but at sea, yeah. Ahoy! Jasmine Gay! Ahoy, Jasmine Gay! Have you got any messages for friends or relatives back home? You never know where you're going to end up, do you? Don't worry about that. We might be back before you are. You must be out of your mind. You want a bet? I certainly do. Go on, take him on. I'll come in with you for the fiver. Darling, don't be stupid. Well, what about it, eh? Jack? Well, we can only lose 50 bob. A fiver! A fiver! 
I'm a sport. Let's have a real bet. A year's rent, double or quits, eh? Oh, darling, don't be a fool. That's 200 pounds. I thought so. Just big talk. Your arm. Right. I wouldn't let him get away with that. Naturally. Now, let's show him what she can do. You said she'd be no good at sea. Must be a following wind. Is that the best you can do? My last skipper could make this thing move twice as fast. Well, I'm going back for a couple of hours, Kip, and when I get up again, I don't want to see that thing anywhere in sight. So call yourself a skipper. You couldn't drive a bus. Drive a bus, huh? Didn't I drive home for four years from Dublin to Dundalk? And back. And hardly a crash at all. Sing! Yeah? The engine room's flooded. Give me a hand, will you? Oh, no. no. Hey, all you've got to do is keep on his tracks.
I got a badge for first aid and the Boy Scouts. I got a wrist here you can practice on. Come on, lovely. Blazes? Things have gone wrong again. They stopped. It must be some sort of trick. He's going the wrong way. He's gone bonkers. What do we do now? Well, I don't know where he thinks he's going. The fairway straight ahead. We ought to be in the estuary in about 40 minutes. Why didn't you get cleaned up? Yeah. One mile to go. Imagine living rent-free for a whole year. And if Watson puts the rent up, we'll be saving even more money. Yeah, maybe I'm not such a lunatic after all. Oh, you do yourself an injustice. I'm sure you must be. They seem to slow down. No, Ron. I still think we ought to wait till September. I don't think I can get the time off in September, eh? It's our busy time at the Surridge Farm. No, Ethel. I don't think we ought to wait. Oh, not now. I'm not in the mood. Oh. Can't you get a bit more out of her? What about the wash, sir? To hell with the wash. The first in ten years! Huh? Oh, oh, oh! I think we ought to make it July, eh? Yeah? No, Ron. September. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, eh? Yeah? Better make it July, Ron. Oh. Been quite a trip. It has indeed. Not unprofitable either. I wonder where old Watson is now. <laughs> Somewhere near Spain, I expect. Olay. Once they're around the next bend, they're home. <sighs> in the last mile. If we hadn't been so busy congratulating ourselves, we'd have seen him coming. There's nothing to stop them now. Just about ready, sir. <laughs> they seem to be in position now. Stand by. Hold it! Let this lunatic through. Ah, they're going to let us through. We must be nearly there by now. Well, bang goes 200 quid. I'm frightfully sorry, sir. Idiot!
like it. Couldn't have done more damage if he'd been an aircraft carrier. <laughs> I'll take her in, Sid, if you don't mind. Okay, Skipper, you come with me. I want to show these yachting types where they get off. Yes, you come now. Good Lord, he's bringing her alongside himself. <laughs> well, simple enough, isn't it? When you've had the experience, I've like a lot of things. That's right. Of you, but uh, Mrs. Goddard would be most disappointed if you didn't. Oh, Rose, what do you think? Oh, it's very nice, I'm sure. Ah, doors for weekends. Hey, Rose, how do I look? Charming. Funny, you know, I fancy myself in one of these things. Right, she's asking 1300. I'll offer 950 cash, take it or leave it. He can have it in one pound note if he likes. Done. I'm so happy for you. It's a lovely life. Would you like to go and have some lunch? 